Um, so now with all of this new layer style knowledge and brushes and I don't know whatever gradient things and all the things that you've been learning through those Photoshop textures we're gonna now put it into practice and we're gonna create our first what I like to call posters uh, it's gonna be an 8x10 alright 150 ppi and it is gonna be a poster that is based on one single word and you want to try to visually emulate the word that it is all right I have other examples so don't worry we will look at these together and um, so I have the word ice uh, the idea was that the ice should look like a block of ice at least for me this is what I wanted to do uh, the block of ice and then I decided to kind of juxtapose the ice in a desert area kind of like playing against hot and cold and so the ice is melting, right? Um, the border, it has a border, and your assignment will have a border as well. In this case, the border is, being, is supposed to kind of look like frost, and like you're maybe scraping through an icy, frosty window to see the ice. Let's just break this one down, layers, what they are, and take a look at them. So I have two frost layers that are created to make my background so and as you can see there are bevel and boss effects on those as well if I turn the bevel and boss effects you can see what it is it is just a I use the paintbrush with a speckly texture and I put that on there then I put some bevel and boss effects to make it look like it's got thickness and then I went in with an eraser and kind of erased into it to make it kind of look like I was scraping I added a whole nother layer on top of that one again with a little speckle and then layer then I got put a bevel and a boss on that so combine the two of them together and it should look like a little frosty border fine moving along we have some little droplet layers so these are little sweat the sweat the beads of of sweat that are coming down off of this ice that's its own layer and obviously good old bevel and emboss right bevel and emboss uh, they're actually there the drop shadow I turned off that I don't like think I like the drop shadow, so I got rid of it Then we have the ice itself is oh, this word. Oops Sorry about that um, Let's turn off the block of ice is behind there uh, And then oh look at the little eye drops there uh, the little sweat so this word ice is typed and it has bevel and emboss effects on it now one thing that we did not look at is that bevel and emboss has these different gloss contours and see this gloss contour makes it look really kind of shiny more shiny than a straightforward bevel and emboss right so that was just this guy here and now it takes on this very shiny it's a little bit kind of metallic looking i think actually but for me it worked in terms of what I was doing. I thought it worked out just fine. I made some puddles and some drips. I used some filters. Uh, the background, does anyone recognize this background? A it's a gradient, right? It's a gradient. It's, a, it's, a, it's one that's built into the gradients. Where are you, gradients? It's this one right here. It's a gradient. Oh, not a radial gradient. It is just a linear gradient. Then you'd say, well, what about this sunburst? That is a filter and a um, render and a lighting of, or lens flare. A lens flare, and we have different at lens flares. We have one that looks like this. You can put the lens, I'll put one up in this corner. There are different kinds of lens flares and different kinds of intensity to the lens flare. Uh, it makes it look like little suns, but a lens flare is actually a uh, aberration it's something that happens when light enters the lens of a camera and so Photoshop allows you to uh, create lens flares in your photos to try to make it look like your digital image was taken with a real camera but we can use it to make Sun like a little sunburst which is kind of cool so that is that one let's move along that was under uh, filter uh, render lens flare Thank you. yeah so that's kind of fun in itself. Moving along, let's go look at this one. All right, so 
this would be a if I were to give this a a grade I would give it a C okay the word space does it look like space no. no how do you make a word look like space it's difficult it's very challenging um, the background and everything is starting to look like space it does it have a border yes it does is the border very interesting not really right so why I'm showing you this is I want you to think when you come up with your word you definitely want to come up with a word that evokes visual uh, some visual things in your head something that you could visualize um, a word like air is not a very good word wind not maybe not the best word because right. what does wind look like it's hard you can see the effects of wind but you can't really see wind right so if you want to challenge yourself that's fine but it becomes very difficult now this has what on it what does anyone know what the what we can um that's right now we're to glow what else babylon and boss what is this thing we just learned lens flare uh, you can put a lens flare on top. You might be able to shift it, but uh, that's just that one comes in kind of with that red. It has a border with a bevel emboss, and we just saw depending on the gloss contour. Okay, so that one's not great. Let's say I still wanted to do something space oriented. So this is getting a little bit better, right? The word asteroid, at least it's starting to look like a big chunky rock. It's not perfect. So it has a bevel and emboss on it, and it has a, um, so then once, if you put a layer mask on there, right, and you go in with your paintbrush, let's just say a hard edge paintbrush. Make it smaller. Um, and something's not right here. Oh, flow is down. Turn our flow all the way up. Anyway, so now you can chisel away at something, right? So I can make the the word look like it had it's like getting eaten, you know. So it can have more rocky, whatever. You get the idea, right? So so this is closer. It's still not great. The border is very bland. Um, so I would it would need some, you know, maybe if we had a lot of interesting like little asteroid kind of rocks floating around to create a border, that might be kind of interesting. Uh, do note, we're not just taking photographs and putting them in there. If I want asteroids floating around, I have to make my asteroids. I'm not going online finding a picture of an asteroid and moving them around. I would be doing the same method that I'm doing to the word to create my own little rocky asteroids and floating them around to make a border. Okay? So that's things to think about. All right, let's move to another. Let's not look at that one. Let's look at this. We'll get back to that one. So. Um, we have two words and I just said that you pick one word but if you chose to do two words because you wanted them to work together like where there's smoke there's fire you could choose to do that but let's break down what are we looking at how do we think we did this fire the, the little smudgy tool right <laughs> and well before we did that what was the uh, coloring probably a uh, red to yellow gradient right probably a gradient let's turn off that so if I made the word if I type the word fire put it as a gradient and then I could do the smudge into it I can make that look kind of like flames already okay I'm not gonna go into how this word the, that word smoke so then there's an outline and then I put a little glow around that because I wanted it to kind of look like something was actually on fire and maybe burning like as if it was a uh, a, a wick or something um, so then let's look, oh, there's a there's a little drop shadow that's been put behind it um, just to set it away from the background. The background is boring. I would need to create a new background for this if I want a better grade. It has no border. I need It needs a border, right? Those are the elements that it needs. It doesn't have those yet. Let's turn these off and let's look at, um, oh yeah, look at that. I also had a smudgy area to make it kind of have some kind of a glow as well. Um, so smoke, there's smoke, it has a couple layers, so it has the word smoke there, and then I took that layer and then, you know, played with, uh, noise, that's a noise, and then I probably played with the smudge tool and some Gaussian blur and messed around with it till it looks smoky to me, alright? Fire, let's turn that off, let's look at paint. 
So paint, so kind of like graffiti, right, on a wall. So I decided to go with a brick wall behind it, so I made the brick wall. What, you made a brick wall? It's not that hard. What's happening on this brick wall? Uh, there's noise, yep. And then, what do we have? Uh, yeah, well, it's got a, a bevel emboss on something, right? So we have two, we, do we have two layers? I had it combined. Uh, that's another one. So um, it's this, all right? So once you get a brick pattern made, um, then you can select part of it. You know, you could, if we go here, take the magic wand. Uh, so what's going on here? Oh, that's, yeah, the, this is on its separate layer, sorry. I didn't really realize what I had. That, those were just white lines. All right. So now what I have is a layer that is just bricks and a layer that is just grout, all right? So then once I have bricks and grout, I can take these bricks, they don't have noise on them, but you know how to add noise, and I can go to layer, layer style, right? Bevel and a boss, I can bevel and a brass. These bricks, I do not want glossy metal bricks, uh, but you get the idea. I can play with this till I get it the way I like it. There's my bricks. And then I need to do something, same, same idea to my, to my grout, but my grout should not look like a pillow, like the bricks are setting in. So it would probably be, um, be an inner bevel but the lighting has to be in the opposite way and I'd probably soften it up and you get the idea until I get something that eventually looked pretty much like this okay so there is brick background so then I went and looked at the word paint because I wanted to look like paint and splattered so I start with a I'll start with a font, but then I start changing it and adding it and putting little drips and things like that. I hand painted those in, right? I just hand painted those in. But if you notice, I wanted the paint to look like it's sitting and sinking into the grout of the bricks. So I copied that and then I cut and pasted it and shifted it. So what that is, do I actually have yeah, so it's it's kind of hard to explain, but it's um it's got this area that's been shifted and this is set to a colorize so there's hue saturation difference like how it's interacting it's just how it's interacting with the layer behind it and then there's a layer on top of it with a bevel and emboss so so one i wanted it to color the brick right because without it the brick was too much of the brick color coming through so i wanted to colorize the brick a little bit and then I wanted to bevel and emboss some of it on top of there. And anyway, you'll have to discover some of your own little things and tricks. It needs a border. Probably a nice graffiti border would go nicely with the word paint and with other more drips. Maybe there's a paintbrush. Maybe I want a paintbrush or a spray can as part of my border. A border does not have to be a square border, right? It does not have to be, a border doesn't have to hit every single edge. All right. Let's see what else we got. Football. All right, we know how to make football texture now. So there's some football texture going on in there. Uh, lots of bevel and emboss happening. This is a nice uh, grassy texture in the background. What's the border in this one? The field. The field lines, right? That's what's making up the border. Okay. Um, we can break down some of this more another time. I'm not going to, I want to move on to another image. So this one is called Pond. Ah, I can read, right? Pond. The border are these leaves. This is the most, the loosely, the most loose interpretation of a border, but I think that it works with this image. I think it becomes an interesting way to create some sort of border around the, the image. Uh, so let's just break down what's happening here. Let's just turn off layers and go uh, all the way to the background and see what we have. Okay, Mr. Ray, you just said we can't use pictures from the internet. All right, 
we cheated a little bit on this one okay so I went and got pebbles for the background and then I added a blue gradient onto there so it's a blue gradient and I have the blue gradient set to an overlay method if I put it to normal you'll see what it is and then I said overlay because I wanted to just tint the whole thing kind of a blue green color just give a whole tint to the under because it's underwater and I wanted it just to feel like we're underwater so that that got me to my background right then I wanted some fishies I wanted some koi pond it's a koi pond now if you're if you're very visual you can tell that I only have two fish yeah. what do I mean That, that I copied and made four fish exactly so I don't necessarily always have to find exactly what it, once I copy them and I start putting stuff over it you hardly even notice that they're diff, that they're the same fish repeated right plus this one he's running off the edge uh, what do they have they have a drop shadow right so we have a little drop shadow so that they're floating above the water and uh, that's it I mean not above the water they're floating above the ground that would be silly if they're floating above the water they'd be flying fish all right um that's all you need to know about the fish so now here's my water layer the top of my water and i did a ripple effect on a gradient and then that gradient is uh got a opacity and fill so i turn the opacity down and the fill down so that i can see through it a little bit and see through to my fish then i put my word pond in there and now let's look at the word pond what does it have Bevelin emboss. Let's look at that bevel emboss. It is a special kind. It's called a pillow emboss. That makes it look like it's supposedly like a heavy thing laying in a pillow. All right? So it's supposed to look like this word pond is setting into the water and floating. That's great, but I wanted ripples because I have these ripples in the water. So there's a whole second layer of a pond that's on top, and this has an outer glow. It has a bevel emboss and an outer glow. And so between the two of them, they are combining. There's a fill on this that's maybe a little intense. And maybe the opacity down a little bit. But anyway, and they'll kind of work together to make it look like this word pond. And Mr. Rady, that doesn't look like an outer glow that I've ever seen. Well, it's a very fancy outer glow. It's using a contour. It's using this stepped contour. And I actually may have actually, if you click on this, you can create your own fancy contour. Look at that. Mr. Rady. Photoshop is too intense. There's too much to do. Yeah, you know, it is. It's like never-ending things you could keep doing. But there it is. You can create your own contour, which I did because I am the teacher, and I gave my own little contour. But once you do it once, remember, I can copy and paste these effects. So then I found myself some leaves. I didn't find them. It's a, it's a paintbrush, believe it or not. It is a paintbrush in, in Photoshop that is a leaf paintbrush. I had it I picked some colors and I just kind of spread it around and then moved them around until I liked them put the bevel and emboss on it boom made a copy of that layer put the uh, same ones as I did on the pond and so now I have these floating leaves that are floating about causing this is it photographic no it is not photographic realism it is an illustration it is a concept and the word is pond so this is a very challenging word, right? Because the word pond doesn't actually look like a pond, but the whole thing is giving me the feel of a pond. Does that make sense? Yeah. This is the harder way to go. This is the easier way to go, right? Ice, that looks like ice. That is the easiest way to go. Um, I would suggest you start there, unless you just really like challenges, okay? Um, what else do you need to know any questions on what you've seen so when you start this word choice is important it is okay if you start down the word gooey and you have a hard time making it look gooey and you change your word to something else that's okay you start with the word bubble and you start doing it and it's hard to make the bubble look like a bubble and so you switch to gooey fine all right um, you are working in an 8 by 10 150 pixels per inch remember you're gonna need the things to be on layers you're going to need a border at some point you need some sort of background and you need your word and they should all work together all elements 
the whole thing in the end basically should look like what the word is. Does that make sense? Yes. Excellent.